tabulating data. In previous videos, we have learned uh, how to record or how to take the reading from the images given. After taking the reading, then we need to record it in a table. So here I'm going to discuss with you how to tabulate your data. Uh, this is normally how the question sounds. Tabulate your result of HS and V in the space below. HS and V is the quantities given in the questions. Uh, this is a question that we discussed in previous video where H is the height, the height of the inclined plane. S is the length of the ticker tape and V is the speed. Okay, we are going to calculate uh, V later. Okay. For the tables, you need to have the columns and the row, okay? So it depends on how many quantity that you need to record, but normally we have three, okay? The manipulated variable, the responding variable, and the one that we calculate, the result of the calculation. So we have three columns. And then so normally we repeat the experiment for four times, including the first one. So we have five readings and therefore we have six row, one row for the title and then the five row for the reading. So usually, usually we have three columns and six rows usually. Okay. For the tables, you're going to get two marks if you do it correctly. It depends on the completeness and the consistency of the data that you record, the completeness of the table and the consistency of the data. So what does it mean by completeness? For the table, you must have the title and the unit of the variable. The titles of the variable and the unit of the variable. For this case, we have H, S and V. Okay, H is the height, the unit is in CM. Uh, S is the uh, length of the ticker tape, so uh, it's also in CM. So V, V is speed, but sometimes some students, they do not write the unit, so this is incomplete. For a complete table, uh, you must have the titles of all the variable and also the unit. So if it's incomplete, then one mark will be deducted, okay? So, so in this case, the unit is missing. Uh, Suppose you should have this a centimeter per second. So, okay, if you have this, then the table is complete. Yeah, the table is complete, then you're going to get uh, uh, one mark for the completeness of the table. Okay, and uh, this is the data. Okay, this is the data. For the data, the accuracy must be consistent. Okay, so they must have same number of decimal place. For example, here all have one. Uh, decimal place. So this one is inconsistent. Okay, so because of what? Because th uh, this one do not have any decimal place. All others have one decimal place, but this one have no uh, decimal place. Therefore, we say this set of data is inconsistent. Okay, and you're going to lose one mark for this if it's uh, inconsistent. If the data, all the data recorded are consistent, then you are going to get a second mark for the table. So two marks for the table. One mark from the completeness of the table where you have the titles and the unit, and one mark for the consistencies of the data. If all the data are consistent, then you will get another mark. This is past year 2010, paper 3, question 1. The question sounds like this. Based on diagram 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.5, and 1.6 on page 37, 38, and 39, determine the length of the coil L. Uh, the actual length of the coil, uh, capital letter L, are determined using the formula uh, L equal to L minus X, where X is a zero error. Uh, on the wooden calipers and tabulate your data for all the values of n, l, and l in the space below. Okay, so these questions told us that we need to tabulate n, uh, small letter l, and the capital letter l. So we need to have three columns for our table. Uh, this is the first reading, uh, n equal to 5 and the l equal to 0 0.39 cm. Uh, this is the second image. Okay, the n equal to 10 is already written here, okay, and the readings. So this is um, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and then uh, for the vernier scale, so this is the readings, huh? so 5, 6, 7, 0 0.77, um, the reading is in cm, so the answer is 0 0.77 cm. Uh, this is the second reading huh, for this set of data. 
I'm not going to show you all the readings. Okay, so let's straight away go to the table. So this is the table. So in this case, the manipulated variable is the number of turns of the coil, which is n. And then the responding variable is the L. So make sure that the manipulated variable and the responding variable is in the table. And usually they will ask you to do some calculation that is the third column. So manipulated variable, responding variable, and uh, result of the calculations. Okay, three columns. Now, if all the readings are correct, you are going to get two marks. Eh? Two marks for the correct readings. And if the tables is complete with the related variables come with the correct unit, then you're going to get one mark for the completeness of the table. And if the data are consistent, in this case, all have two decimal places, then you're going to get one mark for the consistencies of the data. So four marks, okay? If you get the result of the calculations correctly, you get another two marks, which we will discuss in the very next video. Sometime three marks will be given for the table, uh, one mark for the correct number of columns and rows with the title. So for example, in this case, we have three columns and the label is N, L, and the capital letter L. If all of these are correct, then you get one mark. And the second mark is for the unit. If the units are labeled correctly, then you get another mark. And the third one is the consistencies of the data, which means the number of decimal places. In this case, all the data are in two decimal places for this L. Okay, then you're gonna get another mark. Three marks for the table sometime.